Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at some of the differences between a cinema lens and a photo lens. Okay, so the two lenses we're gonna be taking a look at for this video are the Canon 24 to 70 2.8 version two. And uh, we'll be putting it against the lens that I rented for a project, which is the Ingenue 30 to 76. So this is a super cool lens. Um, it's a cinema zoom. It's a little bit different than a prime. Um, and a lot of times when people are running cinema lenses, they're running cinema primes. But for my project, it was a documentary project, so I wanted to get a zoom lens. So one of the things you'll notice about this lens is it is a lot bigger than the Canon 24 to 70. Um, that's pretty typical of cinema lenses. They're a lot bigger. They typically don't have image stabilization uh, and they typically don't have autofocus. So you might be asking yourself, okay, why would I want to use a lens that's bigger, heavier, doesn't have autofocus, doesn't have image stabilization, and it's more expensive. <laughs> well, a lot of times the answer is you wouldn't want to use it. Um, but there are specific situations that where a cinema lens makes a lot of sense. So a lot of the things that could be seen as a limitation um, for most people, like not having autofocus, for example, is not really a big deal um, because when you're using a cinema lens, a lot of the times you're using a follow focus or you have a first AC that's pulling focus for you. And if they're pulling focus, usually there's a wireless remote follow focus. So there's these motors that go right on the lens. And with the cinema lens, the focus ring and the zoom ring will all be in the same place across the entire set. So when you're swapping lenses on set, you won't have to go and switch out the actual motor location on your, on your rails. So that speeds things up and saves time. Okay, so in terms of build quality on a cinema lens, there's a couple things that make them special. Uh, one of the first things is the front diameter of the lens is typically the same across the whole set of lenses. For photography, that's not really important because you're not really putting many things on the front of your lens except maybe like a UV filter, like a protective filter. But for cinema, a lot of times you'll see those big matte boxes on the front of the lenses. Now, the reason that it's important that the diameter of the lens is the same across the whole set is when you're having your AC swap the lenses, it's gonna make things a lot easier and smoother if it's the exact same size, so you don't have to be using step up rings or step down rings to make it fit in the matte box. So another benefit with cinema lenses, specifically with cinema zoom lenses, is they don't extend or retract when you are zooming in or zooming out. Um, that's not necessarily every single one, but the vast majority of them is like that. So um, why does that even matter? Well, for photo lenses, it doesn't really matter. Um, but for cinema lenses, if you're gonna have a matte box that's connected to like 15 millimeter rails, it's, it can't really zo um, extend or retract without the matte box getting in its way. Okay, so jumping into some of the optical reasons of why you'd actually wanna use a cinema lens. One of the really cool things about them is there's no focus breathing typically. Uh, um, for most cinema lenses. And there are some cinema lenses that, that do have focus breathing. Um, so what is focus breathing anyway? So basically what it is, it's when you're racking from close focus to far focus, it sort of like zooms in, so to speak. So you can see on this image right here, the first image, here's the Ingenue 30 to 76. And you'll see as I rack focus from far to close, it doesn't sort of zoom in. It doesn't change your framing at all. And then here's the Canon 24 to 70. And you can see as I zoom far and then I come back, you can sort of see it zooming in. If you watch the edge of the car right there, you can see how it changes the framing a little bit. And whereas for a photo lens, that typically wouldn't be a big deal if you're taking pictures of things, or if you're like on a lower budget uh, cinema application, it's also not gonna really matter too much. So um, that's why it's not as important for a lot of photo lenses. Um, the, the manufacturers don't really care about that when they're making it. But for a cinema lens, it's really important because the director or the cinematographer, they really need to be able to control exactly what is and isn't in the shot. So that's why it becomes super important because you can get more critical framing if you don't have any focus breathing. Um, and on top of that, uh, just as far as aesthetically, in my opinion, I think it looks a lot nicer if, it, if there's no focus breathing. And I, I think most people probably wouldn't notice, to be honest with you. But there are people with like a little bit more of a discerning eye and they can kind of tell if they see focus breathing. In my opinion, when I see it, like even in some movies, like I just watched a movie with my fiance Delaney and um, the cinematographer's lens, they actually had a lot of focus breathing and I kept noticing, I was like, man, that's just so distracting. It kind of like takes me out of the story a little bit. So um, that's another reason why you'd want to use a cinema lens. So another cool thing about cinema lenses is they are typically parfocal. So what does that mean? Well, um, if it's a cinema zoom lens and you start from like zoomed in and then you zoom back wide, 
and then you zoom back in, it's gonna hold focus on whatever you manually focused it to be on. Um, that's not typical for like a photo lens. So if you do the same thing, here's, here's me with the 24 to 70 zooming in and out, and you can see the focus is shifting. Actually, the specific lens that I had, it wasn't perfectly par focal, I noticed, and I think part of the reason for that was um, I was using it on the EF mount on my Canon C200, and that had, had an adapter on the back, so I think I needed to adjust the back focus. So having a lens that's par focal could be pr pretty cool in certain applications, like say you're shooting a documentary or something like that, and you're on a wide shot, and then all of a sudden your subject starts saying something that's really interesting or intense or intimate, and you wanna punch in and get a close shot, you could just do that right away, and you don't have to punch in and then refocus. So another cool thing about cinema lenses is they typically have a de-clicked aperture ring. So what that means is there's like a knob on the lens that you manually open or close the aperture. So you're letting more or less light in with that knob. So one benefit of that is you can have it done wirelessly from like your first AC or the DP if, if whoever's controlling the, the aperture could control that. And you could do it really precisely and you can also do it smoothly. So if you have a subject say, um, going from indoors to outdoors, you can um, smoothly control how much light is getting to your sensor. Whereas with the photo lens, it's typically done in one third stop increments. So you'll sort of see like a little bit of like clicking, like as your exposure changes. Um, that's typically not a great look that you wanna see, and it's not necessarily like a professional look. So um, that's part of the reason why you'd wanna have that in a cinema lens. Okay, so another cool thing about cinema lenses is uh, typically you get them in sets. A lot of times cinema lenses are really expensive. Like for example, the, this lens, the Ingenue 30 to 76, I think it goes for close to 20 grand. And the Canon 24 to 70, which is kind of like a similar lens, but for photography, goes for, I believe it's like 1600 bucks now, which is still not a cheap lens at all. Um, and, and that lens is, is my own, I actually own that lens. Um, I don't own the Ingenue lens, unfortunately, I wish I did, but so maybe you rent like a wide zoom and a tighter zoom, or you rent, um, if you're renting primes, maybe you'll rent like three to five primes, and the look is gonna match across the whole set. If you have a little more of like a corporate project, you're probably gonna want something a little more clean, um, not as, as many like chromatic aberrations or flaring or anything like that. Whereas like with this look right here, this is with the uh, Kawa anamorphic lenses, and you can see it's got crazy flares, but for the project, I thought it made sense and it's kind of added to the intensity and it's pretty fun. So um, that's why I picked that lens set and the flares and the look matches across the whole set. So another cool thing with the cinema lenses is they typically have a really long focus throw. When you're focusing, if you're using your hand or if you're using a manual follow focus or a wireless follow focus, there's gonna be like more travel and you can be a little more precise with how you focus. Whereas on a photo lens, it's got a really short focus throw. So you really kind of don't have as much of a chance of hitting perfect focus and also the focus markings on the lens. So here on the cinema lens, you can see it's got all the focus markings. It's basically telling you exactly where you need to be to hit perfect focus. And you can have your subject there. So if you have talent and they're, they can walk and hit their marks, you can measure that before you do your take. And then you can know, okay, I need to be right at 10 feet or whatever to hit perfect focus. And you can do it um, on a repeatable basis. Whereas with the photo lens, like the 24 to 70 here, you can see it doesn't have any specific focus markings on it, except for like a little tiny thing on top of the lens, which is like, it's super hard to see. So in terms of size and weight, typically cinema lenses are quite a bit bigger and quite a bit heavier. So there's some positives and negatives of that. If you have to carry your lens around for like eight or nine hours, I mean, you might prefer a smaller or lighter lens, but um, there's a couple benefits of having a bigger, uh, heavier lens. First and foremost would be, it's gonna give your camera a little bit of a different look. So if, you're, if your camera rig is actually heavier, the way that the handheld looks, it's got a little bit more of an organic feel. It doesn't really have any of those micro jitters. So even though it doesn't have image stabilization, it's still gonna have a specific look that's a little bit more pleasing. And then secondly, client perception. So if you see a giant lens, I think everybody that sees that is like, wow, man, that's crazy looking. What is that lens? You know, and it, it's one of those things that's just kind of like, that's not the reason to get them. Like, but 
it is one small benefit of having a cinema lens. So probably the main reason to get a cinema lens is you can really get specific with your look. So um, the lens that, that I was kind of testing was the Ingenieur 30 to 76, like I mentioned, and you can see the out of focus area and the way that it handles focus as it rolls in and out of focus. It's just really unique looking. So here's the Canon 24 to 70, which is also, I mean, one of my favorite lenses, super clean, super sharp, looks great. But then we'll jump back to the 30 to 76 here. And if you take a look at the out of focus area, it's got this sort of like circular, um, look to it that it might, I don't know, it just, it looks like it pulls this, pulls your eye right to the subject in the frame and the way that it handles contrast. Um, and then one thing that I can't really show in, in this video, cause, um, I didn't get to test it, but the way that it handles flaring too, it's just really beautiful. And it's got a look that it's, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is, but when you see it, you just go, wow, that like really looks like a movie. There's something very specific about the look and your brain has a way of noticing it. And I kind of thought at first, I was like, okay, this is probably just me because like I'm a camera nerd and this is the kind of stuff I like. But then when I was showing the images to my fiance, Delaney, I didn't tell her which lens was which. She's like, wow, I really like this lens a lot. She was immediately drawn to the Ingenue lens. And so just kind of validated the fact that like, even if someone's not like the biggest camera nerd on the planet, um, like myself, uh, you could still sometimes see the difference and you don't even know exactly what it is. You just know you like it. Okay, so should you try out a cinema lens for your next project? Well, uh, I mean, probably not, to be honest. There's probably a lot of other things that would make a bigger difference, uh, like lighting, composition, uh, editing. I mean, there's a million other things that would have a bigger impact. But if you are looking to try a cinema lens, what's cool is you can kind of fine tune the look that you're really trying to go for. And it can really give your film like that extra 1%. So that is why I rented the lens. I had a specific project that was pretty cool and it was kind of something that I thought like, hey, this is probably gonna wind up in my reel. And so that's why I wanted to kind of just push it over the edge and give it just something that gives it a little bit more of a high-end look. So anyways, that's it for me today, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around and checking this video out. Um, hope you found it useful or informative. And uh, if you like this kind of video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.